Hey everyone, Rob Van Dyson here again up at Hobble Creek uh, to do this video. Today is the 15th of November 2020. I do have a fire going here because it is a bit chilly, so you might hear a little bit of that in the background. And I'm sure sometime during this video I'll get a face full of smoke. <clears throat> Anyways, first just a little bit of an update. I did go down to Hobble Creek. I'm sorry, I did go down to Moab uh, for the Scots and the Rock Celtic Festival. Uh, last weekend, which is why there wasn't a video. And as far as that went, everything I can control, I think, went fairly well. Everything that uh, the organizers could control went very well. Uh, what didn't go very well was the weather. Um, we had gusts up to, I believe, 50 miles an hour, maybe even a little bit more. Um, a lot of tents got destroyed. In fact, most of the tents that got put up got destroyed. Fortunately, ours survived. Friday night, and we ended up just taking it down, just having some chairs up, and flying our banner, um, well staked down, which was about all we felt we could safely actually put up. Um, so, not the greatest uh, festival I've been to, but like I said, everything that could be controlled by man, I think actually was controlled fairly well, and that it went well. As far as NaNoWriMo goes, um, I haven't had uh, a lot of time to work on that, so I am grossly behind. Hopefully next week I'll be able to report that I am much further along than I am now. Uh, right now I think I'm right around a thousand words, and I need to be much further if I'm going to hit that 50,000 word um, goal. <clears throat> So on to my main topic, which is going to be risk. I was watching a video earlier today from the Unloose the Goose podcast. Um, they do it as both a live stream, put up on video, and they also will release a podcast. And this wasn't their typical format because most of them were actually down at an event, uh, Jack Spirico's workshop that he does every year. And so it was kind of what they refer to as a guerrilla podcasting, you know, reporting on the move, you know, instead of in studios or in their own offices and stuff like that. And they were addressing the fact that they were having this event during this COVID pandemic. And one of the points that they brought up that kind of got me thinking was everyone is here. Everyone that is here understands the risks that they're taking both socially. I'm sure they're going to get pushback because they had an event with close to 80 people, including staff, um, and in a scenario where it is not feasible for everyone to stay 60 feet apart, for everyone to wear masks, etc., etc., etc. And also, um, I do believe COVID is a real thing. Do I believe it's overhyped? Yes greatly overhyped for political reasons and for financial reasons of certain individuals. Uh, but it is a real thing and it's also cold and flu season, just putting it out there. Uh, and so having a gathering, uh, people flying in from literally across the country to an area, you're going to get sick. Uh, you know, you go to a convention, you're going to get sick. It's called the Con Club in the circles I run in. And, but it's one of those things where everyone who went, you know, knew about it, knew the risks they were taking, and decided to accept those risks. And when I was in studying for my insurance license for a short amount of time, I did sell um, life insurance with health insurance thrown in so I could sell certain policies. And to get your life insurance and health insurance license, you actually have to go through, study, take a course. I think the course is actually optional, but chances of you passing without taking a course are actually fairly low. And then you have to go and take a test. And you have to pass that test before you can apply for your license. And in the course that I took, <clears throat> one of the things that they addressed was the issue of risk. 
and that there are several ways of dealing with risk. And they actually listed off, I think, five. I'm just going to go over a couple of them here today. But they weren't just talking about risk as it applies to insurance. You know, why would someone want to pay money to take out life insurance? Um, but it actually applies as a principle. It applies to many different things. And um, three of the ways that I very clearly remember is risk avoidance, insurance, or third party, and then risk acceptance. And real quick, risk avoidance is basically means that you take a look at something that says, there's a risk there, I'm going to avoid the risk. And in some cases, that's good, you know. Gee, there's a risk if I jump off of the second story of a building, the balcony of a second story building, that I am going to hurt myself. So you know what, maybe I'll take the stairs. Now, do people jump off of the sixth story, or I'm sorry, of the second story of buildings all the time and not get hurt? Yes. But there is an elevated risk. And, you know, there are people who are crazy enough to jump off a third and fourth story. Can you do it and come out all right? Yes. But there's a very high risk to it. And so risk avoidance would be, I'm going to take the stairs. Um... Oh, and another one is risk mitigation. Basically, let's take the same example, jumping off the second story of a building. Okay, I'm going to jump off, and instead of trying to jump off onto this um, concrete slab, I'm going to jump off into the grass, or I'm going to put out some mattresses or something to help me break my fall to mitigate the risk of me jumping off of the second story. Yeah. Would you probably be smarter just to take the stairs? Yes. But you've mitigated the risk. The risk isn't nearly as high as it was if you were to just jump off onto that concrete slab without um, without trying to mitigate the risk as, as such. And the reason why this is so vivid in my mind is I do remember in high school people jumping off of the second story of the school and one section they had a concrete slab um, and then there was a <clears throat> if you went down a little bit further along the railing there was actually a place where you could jump off into the cracks no I never did it but I did watch other people do it amazingly enough they were all freshmen anyway beside the point and then you have things like insurance, which are your third party. And basically what they're saying is, you know, yes, there's a risk. You're going to pay a small amount. That way, in case something does go horribly wrong, you jump off and you break your leg, um, that you are not fully out of the financials of having to jump or jumping off of that second story. You know? Yes, your leg is still broken. Yes, you are still in a lot of pain. But your pocketbook is not as deeply hurt. Or in the case of my high school, their parents' pocketbook isn't as deeply hurt. Another uh, method is just risk acceptance. And honestly, that was kind of going through the head of most of these freshmen. Is Yeah, I know there's a risk. Um, yeah, I know I can be seriously hurt, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I believe our culture in the United States in 2020, that we have become either very risk adverse or dependent on third party. You know, okay. Um... You know, I'm going to live in Florida, you know, as an example. And there are people who say, no, I would never live in Florida. There are too many hurricanes that come through that just do massive amounts of damage. I love the scenery of Florida. I love the weather of Florida, but I'm never going to live in Florida. 
And then there are other people who are like, yeah, there's a lot of hurricanes in Florida. But the government will bail me out if something happens. You know, FEMA will come to help me set up again. I'll also have insurance. And so they take very little action to actually mitigate the risk. <clears throat> and my personal belief is that we should be leaning more towards risk mitigation and risk acceptance. And when I say risk acceptance, I'm not talking about being reckless. You know, jumping off the second story of uh, my school, there was no good reason to do that other than just fun. They were just accepting the risk and the smart ones jumped off into the grass instead of the concrete. So that uh, you're more likely to turn your ankle probably on the uneven grass than onto the concrete, but your impact is going to be a lot less. Now, when it comes to actually designing your life, here's the thing: you're not getting away from risk. There's always risk in everything. You know, I got into my truck. I drove up here. Um, I could have been in multiple accidents. A gravel truck could have lost control and wiped out and wiped me out. And then I would have either been severely injured or dead. You know, a lot of things could happen, but I still drove up here. Now, did I take steps to mitigate the risk? Yeah, I followed traffic laws. And I've done stuff, you know. I kept my head on a swivel. I was aware of my surroundings, what was going on. You know, I was pulling out of one parking lot and just as another vehicle was pulling out. And could we have crashed in? Yeah, it was at low enough speeds that it would have been no serious damage to either of us. We were both in large trucks. But, you know, there would have been damage to the trucks and a minor uh, possibility of damage to us, you know, the people inside the trucks. But because I was paying attention, I saw them, they saw me, we both came to a stop, I waved him on, he drove out, and then I followed him out of the parking lot. But I think we have become so risk adverse as a society that we look at something like, okay, well, you know what? I want to go on this new career path. I want to start my own business. And you can look at it and say, well, there's a lot of risks to that. And there are. Um, but as I've mentioned before, there's risks for me just being employed. I have almost zero control of the company at my position um, as a production worker. You know? Whereas if I own my own business, then I can say, you know what? Business is a little slow right now, and you need some better marketing. Or, um, you know, I had this unexpected expense. I better step up my business. I actually have more control over it, but I also have a greater risk. If something happens and it wipes out my business, I am at a greater risk than I was as if I was an employee. Because let's just say um, I make a knife. Uh, someone goes out, uses it stupid, and uh, hurts themselves or hurts someone else because they are being stupid, essentially, then, you know, I could potentially get sued. Or, you know, let's just say, um, keeping with the knife, I make a knife, someone is using it, let's just say they're using it the way that I made a chocolate. Or I made a fro, which is used to split wood. And I make them a fro, and they're beating on it exactly how it's supposed to be used. And the blade snaps, flies up, and hits them. You know, I'm at risk of being sued. Whereas right now, as an employee, um, if something goes wrong with one of the trailers we make, or the company gets sued, I don't. I can still um, be taken out by the financials of that. But it's not me personally being sued. It's not my business being sued. It's someone else's business being sued. But I, my personal belief is that uh, my 
my risk is actually greater being an employee because I have zero control. And Utah's an at-will state. Uh, they could fire me because they don't like a t-shirt I wear. Um, they could fire me because of whatever reasons. You know, I've been laid off before. I've been furloughed before. Um, I have no control. But well, people look and they see it as something that, you know, that's quote unquote safe, like a job, and say, well, I don't want to take the risk of being my own business. And what I really believe we should be doing is that we should be doing risk evaluations, something they teach you in the military. And also, it, at least most high level corporate, is okay, we're going to take a look at this situation. What is the risk if we don't do anything? What are the risks if we do do something? What are the risks if we do one of these many things? You know, let's just say you have five options in front of you. One of them is just doing what you're doing. And then four innovations that you could uh, potentially try and go. Well, there's risk with all of them. Eva and you evaluate the risks and say, okay. So, for instance, right now, if I were to lose my job, you know, I would really be up a creek without a paddle right now. Um, my wife isn't working, my daughter isn't working. Um, and so right now I am the sole income of the family. I do have my side business, that's not bringing nearly enough to cover our bills right now. So what can I do to mitigate that risk? Well one, try and be a good employee. Um, I believe that I do that, you know? um, but my other thing is, okay, well, let's get some additional streams of income coming in here that are not reliant on uh, my job, and that's what I'm doing. Now, I evaluated the risk. Right now, I know that I cannot just go wholehearted or 100% with my side business. That right now, that's exactly what it is. It's a side business. I cannot cover my bills with my side business at this moment. I don't have <clears throat> access to some of the things I need to be able to go full time. I don't have the client base built up right now to go full time. Um, I love selling at Evermore, but Evermore, at least until it grows significantly, is probably never going to be able to be my full time business of my full time market. And also, if I am just selling at Evermore, I am down to my entire uh, income stream is based on Evermore. If they decide they don't like me, if they go out of business, once again, I'm up the same creek without the paddle. So, what I need to do is I need to sit down and say, okay, this is a risk. Me staying at my job, there are good benefits to it, but there's also risk involved. Okay, what can I do to mitigate those risks? Okay, show up on time, be there when I'm supposed to be there, do my work. You know, try not to cause too many problems for them at work. Um, so that they're more likely to try and keep me. And when I got furloughed, I got brought back on. I believe most of the people who got furloughed were brought back on, but there might have been a few, I don't know, none in my shop. They're like, you know what, we're not going to bring that particular person back. So I mitigated my risk that way. I'm also trying to build side businesses. Um, things like my YouTube channel, like my blacksmithing business. Um, things like <clears throat> uh, NaNoWriMo. You know, or, sorry, my writing. And trying to disperse my risk. So that it's not just all or nothing. That if I lose one thing, I at least have these other things until I can find something to fill in the hole that that made. Um, also looking at our finances, trying not to spend a whole lot of money we don't need to spend. I'm still working on that. I have certain comforts that I really like that aren't, strictly speaking, necessary. But they help me get through the day so I still spend money on them. If necessary, I could cut those. Um, you know, things of that nature. So, before this video gets too long with my rambling, here's my question to you, or here's my call to action to you. 
is to take a look around you know, at just about everything you're doing. You know, what are your risks? What are your risks if you do it differently? What can you do to mitigate this risk? And don't be reckless, but don't be afraid of risks. Risks are part of life. It's what makes us grow, makes us stronger. Don't be stupid with risks, but don't be afraid of them either. All right, with that, I'd like to encourage you all to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave comments. Um, comments kind of help me know how I am doing. So, once again, like, subscribe, leave comments. And take a look at your own life. What, identify your own dreams. And figure out ways to work towards them as fast or as slow as necessary. All right, with that, good night, snap.